Ngolo ya mabuda nge itanda. Avelungu, vasala istanga, mesi babegi minu ganje, isi falanga. Mesi guve kuna oza shaya inzi, mesi bayakti, mesi aboke, mesi bayapifungi, wafindi wilis. Si akule ya babam, si kela guwe babam, si kelu selu sumanda. Yebun si meni babam, wabuse sela yutina, sobiza wena sumanda. Si akule ya babam, Si te la gue bevan, si te luzuelo, su manda. Ebun si me nevan, o se te la. Y camalami, me deslungi le cliza, difunda, y bangale supa, es, es, es nevuso high school, y tanda, o gala, y bola, no. Nukiti manuksina gifisa ukuba besen itiskole gifisa ukuba ipo isanum tode. Patagabi, Uti, Ubaba Mangabe, Wille, and ten goods. Indeed, Patagabi, no Uti, Uti, Uman and Ubaba, a Pusa Bobabil. By a Eba Pusa and Gaujoal. Pelabes back, Mangi Bacos, Umanati, at Ubaba, but Dala will never fool Patayin and Miss Bacos. Missing <laughs> Cooting from some blue, Manga Begate, Beholen Gulishan, at Cootcom some blue at it is a hamburger and go cock, Anga Bissa, Salisay. Web soak, says Lay. Go, Cunyanga boy, Salison. Go corner, good old figure. Uncatangua, Umana, no bab, good tanguas with Villap. Carima, Carima, no. Africa is full of surprises. It's got this primal energy still that bursts forth every now and then. But it's got very wonderful growth potential because you can still shape something from it, something new, something new always out of Africa, you know. And I think even in, in, in the case of Buddhism, that is highly likely that any new form of Buddhism that is going to come about in the Western world will probably have its origin in Africa. And I feel very excited to be part of that. Yeah, I was not, not so much converted, if you like, to Buddhism because of its lofty philosophy at first but because of the beautiful people that came out of it. And that, I think, is probably the ultimate test of a religion. What kind of person comes out of it? My coming to this country and establishing myself here has been a very um, intuitive drive, you know, that 
something has pushed me around to become here in the first place to get this property and to do this, which I consider to be a great, probably the center of my life. I mean, if I leave anything behind at all that's worthwhile, then this is probably it. Van Luan has been always supportive. That's what I can just say. He has always been supportive of our project because at the beginning we didn't have any money. So I think it's the Buddhist community that organized, uh, raised funds so that you can start the project. Everyone had to give a name. And at the end we chose Wazamoya because it has to do with the coming of the Holy Spirit. Of course, it was inevitable uh, operating here as we do that we um, became aware of this immense AIDS problem, which is particularly bad in KwaZulu-Natal. And uh, it happened amongst our own staff. And again, spontaneously, as a Buddhist, you want to respond to that, see what you can do. So the idea was then born that rather than giving individuals the occasional advice when they're already sick with AIDS, that it makes sense to try and prevent AIDS. <laughs> and uh, that is when we had Sue Hedden, who speaks fluently Zulu and who has become an absolute saint. She's the Mother Teresa, I think, of uh, this part of the world. Yes. And so she, she, as you know, goes out there and um, helps where she can. And not only just in AIDS, but um, in helping children go to school, buy them clothes, books. It seemed to us a natural outflow of caring for your environment. See where you, where you are needed, where you can help. Well, I mean, I think Louis, you know, just him owning the Buddhist Retreat Center, Wars on My Project, would have really struggled to start and be who we are today without, you know, Louis and the Buddhist Retreat Center support. I mean, we've been housed and supported by them for the last five years. Yeah, that would be great. Slow, I can say she is vulnerable because uh, her mother and father, they just drank. They are, I can say they are abusing the money. They are not uh, supporting the children. That's why we took Slow to our support group because um, before, uh, Slu haven't got uniform, she didn't pay school fees. You know, the other child in the Slu, in Slu's family died. That child was fainting daily at school because of star she was starving. <laughs> Slu is supported by Chrissy and Louie. They send us the money every month, and then we go to town and buy food. They are kindly people. I was a boy, but I and I was a boy. I was a boy, and 
ati siyabonga krisi kukusle telu kusham goba besinane mzinabandu gigatandu kusanga nanabu krisi beni lulu Orange. <laughs> Always a can't you ever put this in same? It's okay, be a band, wasn't it? I want to survey a lungy sack as a bears with your callings in the sun to him. Can't you lie? I eke was a bon and gave us with so funnily guessing to any pain. People here, they are poor. Sometimes they go to the PRC and steal things, but the Buddhism people. They are so patient, they only call even the person caught in court. They just talk with that person and they don't hit him. They only just talk, which means that it's unusual. I think their philosophy is just wisdom to be wise and also, and also to be compassionate. That's what I've been seeing them uh, displaying it. To, to people in the community. People always come to the Buddhist retreat center with their problems because they can see that that is the only place they can get help. People are hungry, starving, people don't have clothes, people don't have money, people are sick. I think that is the main reason why people usually go to the Buddhist retreat center. There's always a belief that where there are white people, there is money. <laughs> I'm sorry to say that. A story in the Tuskunda Manje City, Osaka Muni Buddha, Babe Ham, Manje Vasangana, no Mpane Kupa Amakush. Bamboos, which he was a pillar, Macush, what um fana, what compel lot, what he low bullow, but so what to put a ballet. Up in the footy, who put a hamba yet. Was a gun and a bany beshire in your nigums aul. A say shy low muny wabo, best what it says Kushukuti, Okshuti, Opoda, we are turned in veil. Okshuti is Luane, and a phone is Bula. I think um, the Buddhism, uh, for my own knowledge, but I don't know it's true or what else, they don't kill. I think uh, if uh, they are not. They don't eat meat, isn't? So if uh, because they believe that if you eat meat, you first kill, and then you eat meat. So that's why I think they are also helping those people who are pure, poor, because they don't like them to die. <laughs> Yamakomo in Yaman, yes, it is come again. You also want to give you a cup of lager. I 
I can say I like it, but <laughs> they say we don't use meat here. <laughs> because even uh, the time uh, we were doing a Chris, uh, children Christmas party, the time we were doing there at VRC, we were just cooking dal and also curry and then other things, but not meat. But to us, uh, black people, you know the party is party with meat. <laughs> <laughs> A really meaningfully lived life is not about finding a cozy little place to hide away in, but to rather take life on the chin and engage all the difficulties that come our way inevitably with some gusto and some courage. I left Holland because I feared this kind of claustrophobic life that was ahead of me, where everything was predictable and organized before. <clears throat> in other words, I wanted to live dangerously. And when I had this choice of going either to New Zealand or Australia or Canada or Africa, naturally I chose Africa because that seemed the most dangerous to me. You know. And I've lived dangerously ever since and enjoyed it. To a certain degree, spiritual awakening or spiritual emancipation can be equated to be able to go out in the world and engage it in the rough and tumble way in which it comes to us. I think people are very respectful. I mean, one thing I'm deeply impressed by this community, and I, I just see it over and over and over again, is how open and how accepting and how non judgmental people are in terms of who you are, your spiritual practice. There just seems to be this general acceptance and openness that you don't find so easily, I think, in our culture. Okay. For me, different religions or maybe different denominations do not mean anything. It's a rope that leads you to God. Everything they do is part of the, the activities that we also need to do. As a Christian, I also feel like uh, you need to help people when they are in, in crisis. Every time after having helped someone, you, you feel happy yourself. There's that satisfaction inside you. The more meditators there are, the more gentle the people can tend to become, the more compassionate and more kind. But I think generosity and a good life starts with oneself. And if you are a demonstration of that, it will rub on other, or off on other people. And an example is indeed the center itself. I mean, it was started as a form of insanity, I think. It was a mad, crazy moment in my life where I decided to build this thing out of scratch in a desperately poor area. And yet I was driven by something or the other. And people keep telling me what a marvelous influence it has been in their life. If I just meditate, uh, many things can, can come. I even teach my children to, to meditate. The first time I was doing, I was, I was trying to teach them. They were just laughing, but now they can do it. <laughs> even my grandchildren. <laughs> The tradition is, of course, that these stupas contain relics of the Buddha, or his disciples, or even manuscripts, anything sacred that has some significance in our tradition. This one hasn't got anything in it. We left it empty. And we had to lift a hole in the stupa before closing it up to be able to get inside and do all, to remove all the scaffolding. And when my Induna, my helper, my black helper, saw me building it up again, he says, what are you doing? because how can you get in now? So I said, no, 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 it's going to be empty. So he said, why, you know, I mean? I said, well, look, it's, isn't Nkulu Kulu, God, the God in the, Zulu, in the Zulu thing? Can you see him? Can you touch him? 
No, no, he said, he's all over the place. He sees like the space. I said, well, that's why it's empty, you see. And he's never forgotten that, you know, that now, as far as he's concerned, Gulu Gulu lives inside that open space inside him, which is good enough for us, you know. For me, Stupa is just a reminder to them of the teachings that were done by maybe uh, the Buddha. I think the Stupa will always remind them of the good things that Buddha did. Lungile was one of the children on our list. We have a very long list of orphan vulnerable children who should qualify for food parcels, but unfortunately our funding only allows us to do, at the moment, we're doing about 25 families. So if people come to Wars and Wear and they want to do something to help, often we'll say, would you be okay to do food parcels a month? So that's how Slungile's family, well, Slungile receives her food parcels every month. Hi, everybody. Hi. Come in. Nice to see you. Good journey. <coughs> Are you? Hello, 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 hello. Good to see you. <coughs> see you. Yeah. She's very shy. Okay. Who's good to put this to us alive? Okay, you will have to answer yeah. that. He was born in, in uh, 563 okay. BC. But that's a long time ago. Eh? Where he was born? In the north of India. Mm -hmm. yeah. India. And you know how long he lived? He lived no. 80, 80 years old. Yeah. And he also had a wife at one stage oh, when he was young. <laughs> and a child. And then uh, when he became a monk, his, his, his wife and the child also joined the order. The, the buildings were more of a priority for me to, to get ready. So it, uh, the, the Buddha statue had to wait a long time for it to come about. And I had only built the pedestal on which it sits. It's about that high. And we had a monk coming here once. He said, I've just found out what this pedestal is for. You want to build a Buddha statue there? It's going to be colossal. Five meters, I believe. The biggest one in the Western world. I said, yeah, so what? He said, well, look, it's the most meritorious thing a, Buddha can, a Buddhist can do, to build uh, an image of the Buddha. <clears throat> and I want to be part of it. Come and get him for good. This is God. Okay, this is him for good. I'm going to go to my first. I'm going to go to my it was a colossal task, obviously, you can imagine. When a nose is this size and an eye is this 
<laughs> you are that close to it, you can't really judge the proportions all that well. But, uh, it was great fun doing it. Man came from Africa, and the first religious stirrings probably happened in South Africa. You know, there's evidence that this is probably the case long before anywhere else. There's evidence that people thought about life and death, and the miracle of the seasons, and uh, birth, and things like that in this part of the world. And you can still sense that. There's still something coming forth every now and then that is bright and new. This country is sufficiently chaotic and confused still to allow for new things to come out. And I love it. She's open. She would say what she likes. Most importantly, she's clever. It's unfortunate that uh, she's from the unwealthy family. I think his home background will not allow her to go further with her studies, whereas she's very brilliant. Pig. 